While jailed in Russia for daring to speak out about Vladimir Putin and the war in Ukraine, the political activist Vladimir Karamurza wrote a Washington Post op-ed titled, Change Will Come to Russia Abruptly and Unexpectedly. He says, quote, a society that has gone through the trauma of a brutal dictatorship, massive internal repressions and aggressive external wars that has lived for decades under conditions of total lies and deliberate distortion of normal human values needs, above all, moral purification, end quote. Joining me now is Bill Browder. He's a colleague. He's a close friend of Vladimir Karamurza. So he's one of the last people to see him before he returned to, to Russia and got arrested. He was the largest foreign investor in Russia until 2005, when Bill himself was declared a threat to Russian national security for exposing corruption in state-owned companies. He's also the head of the Global Magnitsky Justice Campaign, named for his former lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, who died in a Russian prison after exposing fraud by government officials. Bill is also the author of the important book, Freeze order, a true story of Russian money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. Bill, it's good to see you, never under good circumstances. Uh, I want to first ask you about, about Vladimir and this op-ed, um, the way he got it out, and the fact that he's making an argument that is why Vladimir Karamurza is a leader, because he's saying something is possible that seems at the moment entirely implausible and impossible. Well, for the exact reason that he has he has called, you know, effectively called Putin the king who's not wearing any clothes, that's why he's in jail for 25 years. He He's brave enough to, to say the obvious, which is that um, why would Russians want this dictator? Why, why would they want to put themselves in this position where you have a, a dictator, a kleptocrat, a murderer um, uh, controlling their lives in their country? And, and he's right. I mean, R Russian people... Um, it, 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 there's a rumor or, or there's a, a myth that, that Putin is somehow popular. It's, it's just not true. Russian people are just too afraid to say anything about him, because if you do, look what happens to Vladimir. Uh, look well, look what, what's happened to all sorts of enemies. They get killed, they get imprisoned, they get all sorts of things. And so Vladimir is, is stating something for us, which is very obvious. Uh, he sees it for himself. Russian people don't um, want to be living in this terrible situation. And um, and he's absolutely right that that when when the pressure cooker keeps on increasing pressure on the Russian people, at some point it's going to blow. And um, we don't know when we don't know how, but it will blow. Bill, in this country, we have a whole lot of people who believe that the 2020 election was stolen and blah, 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 because they hear it in on social media and they see it in uh, in 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 media that 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 tells them that. How does that work in Russia? Do people get proper information? Can they critically examine the information they get, given the restrictions that are on the media in Russia? I would say at this point, no. Um, there, there used to be a sort of very thin sliver of, of free media, of a couple of opposition newspapers, of some web channels, and so on. Uh, when the war started um, in February of last year, all that was shut down completely. Um, and so all the Russians really know is the propaganda they see on television than they hear, and then their lives, which are which are completely not great. And and you know, a, a million young men left the country because they didn't want to be sent to Ukraine and become cannon fodder in Putin's murderous war. Um, they were obviously not that million young men. They were obviously not believing what they saw on television. And those are the ones that had the economic resources to do so. A lot of these people in Russia just don't. And so. I would say that 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 um, it's kind of hard to cover up the fact that that Russia is in a terrible war that they're losing. Uh, there's drones coming in and attacking Moscow and various other places. Um, everybody knows somebody who's died in the war, and many more people are being drafted to the front. You can't get Netflix and Instagram and all this other stuff that you used to be able to get. You can't travel um, to the West other than via Istanbul or Dubai. I mean, life is obviously different, not good. Um, and there's nothing, there's no propaganda that can change that. And so, uh, yeah, there's probably a few nationalists out there, but there's a lot of people just saying, I just want to have a normal life. Why is this happening to me? Why is this monster creating this terrible situation for us?
There's an interesting intersection between the stuff you've done with the Magnitsky Act, which has caused people in other countries who can have influence to cause countries that have human rights abuses to try and do the right thing. You're saying that the same thing ha needs to happen for people like Vladimir Karamurza. As far as you're concerned, he's an unlawfully uh, detained person. And in America here, uh, leaders from both political parties should be agitating for his release. There, there is a, a special provision under the U.S. law, <clears throat> it's called the Levinson Act, which says that if a person is given the status of unlawfully detained, then the U.S. government will use all tools available to it um, to, to push it for that person's freedom. Evan Gershkovitz got this status and he deserved it. Uh, Vladimir Karamurza satisfies all the legal criteria, has not gotten this status. There will be hearings in Washington on Wednesday this week. Uh, to uh, to press the State Department. Why is Vladimir Karamurza not being given this uh, status of unlawfully detained so the U.S. government <clears throat> can fight for his his release? And, and as you mentioned, um, there are lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we had a letter to the State Department that was uh, signed by 50 senators, um, half Democrats, half Republicans, 33 members of the House of Representatives, pushing on the State Department to give Vladimir this status. Vladimir um, is now, the I, I would say, the, the most... Um, beloved um, political prisoner um, from the West. He's the guy who stands up for what Russia should be. He's the person who, uh, who has said that Russia should peacefully coexist. He's the one who said that this war shouldn't be happening. He's the one that said that uh, Ukraine should be given uh, reparations. Um, he's the one we should be fighting for yep. uh, in addition to Evan Gershkowitz. Um, so that that um, he can he can be freed and, and he can he can be the voice of, of the Russian opposition um, not dying in prison. Well, if anybody knows how to uh, move the levers of power to do that, you are certainly one of those people. I just want to point out with your Magnitsky Act, which you have had implemented in many, many countries, we now have, it's been introduced in Serbia, and they are launching a, a legislative process that may result in yet another country joining on to your efforts. Thank you for that. Bill Browder is the head of the Global Magnitsky Justice Campaign and the author of the important book, Freezing Order, a true story of Russian money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath.